colleagues, um, but we're very appreciative of you taking some time to join us this morning for um, this webinar about upgrades, to, you know, free tips and tricks to how to make the upgrade uh, process a little bit smoother for you. Um, so we hope that you'll find this time to be valuable and get some, some good information from it. So again, let me just quickly introduce myself. My name is John Pickerel, and I am the Chief Revenue Officer of Sky Solutions. And I will be, I will be starting the presentation today, but you'll also be hearing from a couple of my colleagues as we go throughout the webinar. And I wanted to introduce them to you really quick. First is Leanne Christopher. So Leanne is our platform operations lead um, at Sky Solutions. Leanne has over 15 years of industry experience and holds um, three ServiceNow certifications, including her CSA, four micro certifications. She's also PMP and ITIL certified. And if there were a certification for awesomeness, awesomeness, she would absolutely get that gold star. So um, welcome, Leanne. Um, next is Joey Pinot. Joey is our ServiceNow practice lead, who also has more than 15 years of technology experience and is an ITIL expert. He's got a myriad of ServiceNow certs and micro certs, including his um, in CSA, um, is absolutely our, you know, our solution architect on staff um, and clearly has the best beard of the three of us. So welcome, Joey. Um, and I just want to, to let everyone know, um, next is we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to cover today and a little bit of, of housekeeping. So our agenda, we're obviously going to talk about Take Me to Paris and upgrade planning, which is where we're going to give you some specific advice and best practices and things, uh, things to do to make that process go as smooth as it can possibly go. We also want to share with you some information on our ServiceNow Center of Excellence and Innovation, our assessment value solution, um, which you can implement for yourself, and we think it can be uh, something that would um, provide some great value to your organization, um, especially in the midst of considering an upgrade. And then we're going to talk about how to reach successful outcomes with your upgrades and again give you some specific methodologies and best practices. Um, we absolutely will have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. We have allotted time for that. Um, so as you might notice, everybody is on mute um, because of the size of the um, size of the attendees. Um, we want to make sure that we stick to our, you know, 30 minute time window. Um, but please do use the chat function if you have any questions as we go through, and we will make sure that we get to as many of those questions as possible um, in the time allotted at the end of the webinar. And if there's any questions that we don't get to, I promise you that we will reach out to you directly with a specific answer to your questions, but we should be able to, to get through most of them. So um, what I'd like to do next is just tell you a little bit about Sky Solutions, because you may be wondering, who is this company? And why are they doing a webinar on ServiceNow upgrades? If you're not familiar with us, um, so who we are is we're a digital consulting firm and we have a fairly straightforward vision and that's to create a better and more connected world. And that mission we have is to help people use technology to accomplish the extraordinary. We actually truly feel that we are um, we are called to something greater than ourselves, and we feel that the, the technology that we work with really does empower people and organizations to do extraordinary things. And what we try to do, our solutions, try to help simplify critical and complex process, processes that enable the digital first enterprise and allows that to take place. So, Clearly, we believe that ServiceNow is one of those enabling platforms. So we are uh, we are a ServiceNow partner, um, and have been so for several years. And I think today you'll we will demonstrate, you know, the the thought leadership that we have around this platform. Just speaking specifically about upgrades, but it'll give you a sense of um, our knowledge of the tool um, and our best practices around it. So a couple of other bits of information that might be you know, interesting to you. We are an SBA certified um, 8A organization. Um, for those of you that are working in the public sector, we do have a GSA IT Schedule 70. Um, we are extremely quality focused. So we have uh, three ISO certifications that you see there. Um, and we're having a very exciting year this year. We actually made the Inc. 5000 for the first time. 
and we got certified as a great place to work. Um, so I'll just put in a small plug for any of you that are looking for new opportunities. We are absolutely hiring. We are growing, um, having a terrific year, and we're always looking for more outstanding people. So um, check out our website for the latest openings if you're interested. Um, without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Joey, who's going to talk to you a little bit about the upgrade planning process. Hey, thanks, John. As John said, my name is Joey Pinot, and I'm excited for all of you to join us today. I've been using ServiceNow since the Aspen release, and um, it's one of the most, you know, robust platforms on the market right now. Um, recently, I've been working closely with the emergency response management applications, as they've been very crucial in the return to work and the contract tracing during the times that we're going through currently. Um, Outside of that, you know, I work closely from a process and a platform perspective, or a process and a technology perspective within ServiceNow. Um, so I know the platform pretty well. I'm pretty well versed in most of the applications. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about upgrade planning. And with upgrade planning, there's a lot that goes into it. So before we start off, what I'm gonna do is kind of get a feel of where you stand in regards to what issues you've experienced with your recent upgrades. Um, these kind of vary based on times, number of items appearing in skip list, issues with integrations, and your instance just not functioning the way that it was supposed to previously, or, you know, maybe everything just kind of crashed whenever you did the upgrade. So we'll take a few moments, kind of go through this, um, have you post some of your answers here, and then that will help us lead into our discussion of upgrade planning and how we can kind of give you some tips and tricks to better your upgrades going forward. And while we're waiting on the responses, just so you know, as we go through this presentation, you may see some things that you may already know, and you may also take away a few tips and tricks that you may be able to utilize in the future. Basically, what I'm trying to do is help you understand, you know, ways that we can help better, you know, the upgrade planning for your organization or for you as an individual. Okay, so what it looks like, a lot of you have had all of the above, um, and some of you just had time, number of items and skip list, and issues with integrations. Okay, it's good to know. Let's go ahead and move forward. All right, so let's go to Paris. So how do we get there? Um, with the upcoming Paris release, they've implemented a lot of new features. Um, you know, such as, you know, asset management and the new upgrade center, which with the upgrade center, that's gonna alleviate a lot of new issues going forward in Paris in which you can actually preview the upgrade before you actually go to um, do your upgrade, which will allow you to actually preview, you know, your skip list, preview issues with your integrations, do a lot of things that you haven't been able to do before that are all included as part of the Paris release. Um, and I know that you know a lot of things like that will happen moving forward, but let's say you're on Orlando or Madrid. You don't have those functions. So how do you actually get there prior to that? Um, look no further than here because Sky Solutions here to help. Uh, in this webinar, we're gonna discuss different ways that we as an organization can utilize ServiceNow best practices um, to help you with your upgrade process and help reduce the time from start to finish to uh, with your upgrades minimize any frustration that you have and ensure a smooth transition. So you may be asking yourself how. How can you know somebody help you minimize frustration with upgrades, uh, cut down the time that it's gonna take? We've heard this before. Um, but let's spend the next 15 minutes or so explaining to you how we have used our proven methodology to do things a little differently to make this work. Over the next few slides, we're going to show you different ways that we've done this before uh, with our upgrade process to eliminate the headaches, frustration, and downtime that we've done um, that you may, have, you may do as part of the upgrading you know, every six months or even on a yearly basis. So are you ready? Here are some steps which will help you. So let's talk. Communication is a must. When it comes to upgrading, you must communicate. When it comes to communication, you need to have a communication plan in place 
so that whenever you're communicating with your stakeholders, everyone's on the same page. How many times have you gone into an upgrade where you go into your stakeholders and everyone comes in with a different mindset? Or no one knows what's going on when you go into your upgrade? It happens a lot. And I think that that's one of the things that we have to worry about going into an upgrade. You have a plan in place to communicate with your stakeholders. You need to have a schedule in place. You need to develop a process that when you go into your upgrade, you have a standardized process so that every time you go into your upgrade, everyone knows what their role is, what they're going to be doing, and how the upgrade's going to flow. You also need to upgrade the, update the organization of changes and new features that are going to be released as part of the upgrade. Because you may have things in your system that you may have added as part of the configuration that ServiceNow may be releasing in a new upgrade. And with them doing this, what you're going to do is you're going to have a conflict. You could have two of the same things in a module. And by doing this, people aren't going to know which one to use. And you're going to have to, you know, basically hide or disable one of those. And you're going to want to disable your customized one more than likely and use the out of the box version of ServiceNow just so that they're aware of, you know, the most up-to-date modules to be used. And testing. When it comes to testing, testing is a big thing to do as part of the upgrade. And this is a big tip. When you're doing testing, always create standardized test plans. If you have different people testing different things in different ways, you're going to run into things that are end up missing, things that aren't in there the way that they're supposed to be, or things that are overlooked. And that's a big thing whenever you're doing upgrades in your instance. You always want to make sure that things are tested the way that they're supposed to be. Um, and standardized test plans can not only shorten upgrade times, but provide a process that you can use for future upgrades. Also ensure when you're doing your upgrade, make sure that you're doing it when production times is low to avoid impacts to the instance. Um, basically, I've seen in, time, in certain upgrade um, that I've done in the past, some people would do them right as the, their organizations were leaving, but there were still people working. This can cause degradation to the system and cause people to start calling into your service desk wondering why the system's not functioning how it's supposed to. You don't want to do that. You want to do it whenever you have limited people or limited you know, people within your organization utilizing the system. Also ensure that the ServiceNow upgrade process is followed to ensure that you stay on track and no steps are missed. This includes, you know, as I stated before, reading the release notes to ensure previously implementation enhancements are now not available out of the box. Features haven't been a, a, um, added to replace custom built features and potential issues aren't there to, um, aren't available that could exist to um, previously implemented workarounds or customizations. You don't want things to be added as part of an upgrade that's going to cause issues to items that you already have that exist. Also, you want to make sure that cloning your production instance to lower instances are done prior to the upgrade. Whenever you do this, you want to start low and work your way up. Clone your lower environments and do your actual upgrade on your lower environments so that you can make sure that it's functioning the way it's supposed to. You don't just want to do an upgrade to your lower environment without having your production data there. That way you can see that everything's working how it's supposed to and then work your way up. Also, you want to work, utilize your automated testing framework when applicable. Um, but keep in mind that that's not always the end all be all. And you need to also, you know, do that manual testing as well. Guy Solutions is also recommending that you do an assessment of your instance prior to the upgrade to ensure it's ready and up to date and that there's no incompatibilities. This actually helps determine if any changes are needed to be made to the instance prior to the upgrade. It corrects any existing issues or reconfigures items which may be included as part of the upgrade which you've added previously, allowing a reduction in the time needed to complete upgrades across all of your instances. With that, I'm going to have Leanne speak about the assessment value workshop a little bit further. Leanne. Oh, thank, yep, thank you, Joey. Great stuff. Yeah, my name is Leanne Christopher, and I am the platform operations lead for Sky Solutions. As a ServiceNow professional, I specialize in IT business management. That is my forte. I really like that area of the platform. One area that I do find tremendous value are all the capabilities for application rationalization within ITBM. It displays data that helps drive decisions captured in the CMDB, 
ITOM, ITAM, and ITSM. So just this sentence alone bridges four major modules of the platform into a single pane of glass. So the hunt for data across many systems is over using ServiceNow. The power of the platform is really truly unlimited. So let's ask one more poll question before we talk about critical planning of additional components during your upgrade. So the question is, how could you be better prepared for upgrades in the future? And again, if you could submit your answer, we'd appreciate it. Okay, Yenny, when you feel like the results are in, we can post those and, t and review them. Thank you. Great. We got a mix of all the answers. And I appreciate the people that have some humor coming into this webinar. It makes it, lightens the mood. And if we go blind and just hope for the best, hopefully you have job security. So we'll touch on all the uh, above items as well. But I appreciate we had some humor there. OK, so these results are great because they touch on several tips, tricks, and technique recommendations around conducting your own assessment value workshop for an upgrade. We're coining that as much as because we're a ServiceNow partner, and they really stress the value in conducting these kinds of workshops. So today, I'm going to talk through all the things that their documentation has that might be a good knowledge transfer to you so that you're aware of some of these tips, tricks, and techniques. Upfront planning and consideration processes and how people use your ServiceNow instance will improve the user experience and the integrity of the data. That is the ultimate goal. I really recommend a multifaceted approach, analyzing your configuration, looking at the customizations, as well as those integrations against the processes that you have your teams follow for support of the people who use it, with them in mind. Explore opportunities that could improve value and provide suggestions of how, and much more importantly, when to implement changes. Too much change leads to over an overwhelming training experience and usually diminishing returns. An important takeaway is ServiceNow platform usage is much, very much a technology where you really should begin with the outcomes in mind. We'll talk about that a bit more today. Think of this as assessing whether or not your key performance indicators are adding value for the platform's sake, people, or potentially just static reporting. And if it's only static reporting, we really should consider ways we can improve value if that's the case. Pausing to reflect on what you are trying to achieve in incremental focused analysis creates roadmap paths for, for you to fortify that you are doing the right things. So as, so as we have shared recommendations of what and who to consider during an upgrade, taking all those findings really should be summarized into those action plans and roadmaps for the platform as well as process changes. Never rule out the need for continuous training and enablement. Think about the capacity to consume change for operational day-to-day -day work as well as strategic positioning for growth. So as you can see in the slide, it is not a focus just on system performance, but includes the consideration of the people who use your instance. A very effective way to communicate is with quick wins, one to five minute recorded demonstrations of product or process announcements. We have seen a lot more satisfaction in this te te technique when positioned as sound bites as opposed to traditional change notifications, or your own instance release notes, expecting people to read them, understand them, and then execute upon them. So it is our responsibility as administrators to ensure employee satisfaction with the platform and the portals that they use, as much as ensuring that one is a, has the ability to independently retrieve data on their own to do their job. Lastly, always consider how the effort by your ServiceNow team aligns with the company goals and initiatives. People really feel valued in an inclusive work environment, and the ServiceNow platform will reduce that distance felt in our remote working world. 
So now where does all this lead? It really truly leads to tangible results, not limited to the four best practice techniques to consider that we're sharing today around operational and strategic benefits, but utilizing a higher percentage of those out-of-box features and functions as they come with each release and bigger gains in gaining organizational maturity overall. All right, thank you. If you would be interested in continuing any of the discussion, please reach out to us today from any of us that you've heard from. We are happy to share much more on the topics and experiences we have had over the years with upgrades and implementations in general. We really feel that the beauty of all of this is that Sky Solutions believes ServiceNow is that platform of choice for all the six module areas where they have focus, just as much as recommending Sky Solutions as your ServiceNow, as your ServiceNow partner. Thank you so much, Leanne. Yeah, thank you. So just to summarize, um, we obviously feel very strongly about um, that one of the most important things you can do in the upgrade process is conduct one of those workshops um, and, and do an assessment of your entire ServiceNow instance to be better prepared um, for, that, um, for the upgrade process. And so one of the things that we wanted to um, make available to all of you on this webinar, we, we mentioned that there was going to be a free offer just for those that are attending this webinar. So we wanted to let you know that if you chose to engage Sky Solutions for your upgrade process, let's say, you know, some of you are probably attending saying that this, these, this is some really good information and some good techniques that I'm going to try and implement myself. Some of you may be resource constrained and might need a partner like us to help you through that process. And if you do, we would conduct one of those value workshops at no additional charge if you end up engaging us um, to help you with your ServiceNow upgrade. So I hope that you will consider those of you that are looking for a partner or looking for you know, some additional bandwidth to help you through this process, we absolutely would love to help you. Um, and finally, I know that we had saved some time for questions and answers. So um, Yenny, I'm just going to ask you, is there, you know, can we just go through any of the questions that have been put in the chat box thus far? And then we need to make sure before we wrap up in four minutes, actually it's three minutes now, we need to make sure we choose someone to win the door prize for today. So first question. One sec here. I do see some questions. Um, so I see one here, um, Willie and Leanne, that says, how, to, how do you do an impact assessment? Impact assessment, that's a great question. So I think it all comes down to prioritization of what the, what the changes are inclusive. Is it product driven? Is it process driven? Is it impacted people driven? So I really like to think through things in those increments in multiple cycles where we really focus on platform capabilities, process capabilities, and the people involved. So it actually ties really well into the theme of begin with those outcomes in mind. The a burdensome feeling for anyone would be that you're working toward metrics only. You're not driving toward value. So that is a great approach to think about the outcomes of that impact assessment and what you're trying to do during an upgrade and plan accordingly. I would really take the time up front in planning early and often to get more stakeholders and more impacted involved users involved to hear their voices. That we've seen much higher adoption rates, less defects, more knowledgeable SMEs and champions of information around that when you include them early and, early and often. More than likely, your upgrade and development is taking place with user stories. I would, I'm the first and biggest proponent for saying include user stories around adoption, organizational change management, and that process of the impact assessment. So as you're assessing things and categorizing things against your list of things you want to do and the people involved, 
that impact assessment will generate results of the impact of the change and determine if it's something that should be part of a production upgrade release or release in the future. One other idea that I like to use often is with those early and often communications is think about the visual expectations that people need to see in order to do their job, especially remote where we can't be in the same office talking through things and looking over each other's shoulders at, on laptops. The before and after picture side by sides is a great way for people to infer and see the progression. And if you can portray that in a visual sense, it will help people with their learning adoption and being able to really um, appreciate the changes and understand why they're being done. Very good, Leanne, yep. thank you. Well, we are right at 1130. So um, Yenny, if you could do me a favor and just uh, pick one of our attendees out of a hat, <laughs> Out of, the, out of the proverbial hat so that we know who's going to win our, our $50 Amazon gift card, which is the, the door prize that we've set aside for today. Yeah, thank you, John. I already found that through uh, randomly picking and it lands on Lily. Here, I'll type her name. So Lily, very good. Congratulations. We will get in touch with you to make sure that we get that gift card delivered to you. But once again, we want to thank, thank all of you for joining us today. We hope that this has provided some value and given you some, some good tips and tricks to help you through the upgrade process. And just to reiterate, we would love to hear from you if you would like to continue the discussion, um, if you have other specific questions that you would like to have answered, or if there's ways that we might be able to help you either in the upgrade process or otherwise as it relates to your ServiceNow instance. I wish all of you uh, a terrific rest of your day. Be safe, um, and we look forward to having you join us on future webinars. Take care. Great. Thank you. Bye. Everyone.